I wasn't too keen on, on Kamala becoming the presidential nominee. I, I, I'm going to confess. I, I wasn't too happy about that. But I'm all in now. I'm all in. For those who might be saying, I don't see how you can support anybody that would be in favor of killing our children. Please hold your righteous indignation and your one trick pony for somebody who don't know the Bible. Oh, don't y'all see this way y'all got to wake up and stop being so spiritual and so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Even though it's 2024, we have a lot of colored preachers out there. And why do I say colored preachers? Because they look at everything through the lens of color based upon their color. So much so that they will even sell out not only just their race, but if they're preachers, they would also sell out the gospel for the sake of their color. I wasn't too keen on, on Kamala becoming the presidential nominee. I, I, I'm going to confess. I wasn't too happy about that, but I'm all in now. Now, this is Reverend Terry Anderson of Lily Grove Church in Houston. He used to have some favor. People had, used to have some respect for him, but he is quickly, as quickly as he can, uh, lose. he's losing as much respect as possible. He is not considered the same as he used to be thought of. Why? Because he has fully embraced this colored ideology that is uh, pervasive in the majority black churches. Colored preachers want their churches to be black. They want to speak to black people. They want to have a black ideology. They want to cozy up and coddle black folks and black, black thought and give black folks uh, an idea that somebody is going to help them typically politically. And when it comes to something politically versus something of the, of the Bible, well, politics tends to win out. And so what he's telling us is why he's supporting Kamala Harris. Tell me if this is a biblical reason or a reason that a colored preacher would. I'm 100% I'm, I'm, I'm now for this reason. This, this representative from, from Tennessee, sorry, Connie, from Tennessee, he called her a DEI candidate. And then they start calling her colored. And then it's well, she is colored, just like you're colored, colored preacher. And they start calling her out of her name. And as a black man, I can't let no white man talk about no sister like that. So that's your reason for voting for her, because a white man says something about a black woman. Now, it's not just white men that said that about her. It's also black people. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, doesn't matter. That's your reason for voting for her. Okay. And, and I'm not take offense to it. By the way, how come you're not offended when someone says something negative about God or they impugn the word of God or they just disregard the word of God? Someone who is charged with teaching the word of God. How come that's not an issue? How come how come you don't fight? How come you don't deal with that? The Bible tells us that we are to um, preach what is of sound doctrine and refute those who contradict. And so it seems like you're going to be one of those ones on the list that we have to refute. Because who is more disqualified than Donald Trump? And Republicans are all in because he is the avatar for their grievance. How qualified does a black person have to be? Graduated at the top of her class at Howard, went to law school, was attorney general of a state, a United States senator, a vice president of the United States, but she's not qualified? So we're not getting the issue of whether who's qualified or more qualified or disqualified. Now, his focus has still has to be black. because He says, how qualified does a black woman have to be? Truth be told, however you want to look at it, both are qualified because all you have to qualify in America is to be a citizen, and a born citizen, not naturalized, but someone born in this country and of age. Both of them qualify for that. Both of them have had some things that they can put on their resume. Again, Trump has has graduated from 
Pennsylvania is a prestigious school of business, the School of Wharton School of Business. He also ran a business. You can say what you want to say about it, but he's a billionaire where he started off not as a billionaire. He's also was the president. And so, yeah, is he qualified? Sure. You may not like it. Same thing with, with Kamala Harris. Is she qualified? Sure. Anyone can be qualified. But is that the reason why? Because is any more anyone's qualifications, do they trump, no pun intended, but do they trump the word of God and what he's mandated? No, they do not. I'm all in. Because I'm not going to let any white man tell me how I ought to feel about a black person. Now, people are all in the fringe and up rug again. It's, it's all black church and every little colored bone, their little colored body, let's say a little colored preacher talk about things of color. They're missing the things of Christ. Now, lest we be confused, he knows exactly what he's going up against. He knows that one, she is for abortion under any circumstances. As a matter of fact, she stated that uh, she thought or she called it or said that anyone saying that women having abortions in the late term, that's a lie. Well, she's lying. How do we know? Because she literally voted against a born alive abortion bill, which would protect any baby that supported uh, a botched abortion. And she voted against protections that would be given to this baby that survived the abortion. So she knows this happens. And she was even against it happening. There is no state in this country where it is legal to kill a baby after it's born. Madam Vice President, I want to get your response. Rightly mentioned, nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting to the women of America. If we were to go and look up the result of that bill, the bill did not pass. Roll call for vote for the 116th Congress, the second session. This was in February 25th, as you see the date, 2020 at 4.06 p.m. The bill did not survive. This is the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Uh, they needed more than what they got. They did get 56 yes votes, 41 nays. But let's just stroll down and look and see who actually voted against this. Kamala Harris, if you see the Democrat senator from California. And so he knows that she's for abortion. She's also for same-sex marriage. She is the person that performed the very first same-sex marriage in the state of California. And so these are things that he knows that she is for and the Bible is against. And let's be clear, he knows what the Bible says about things like abortion. How do we know? Well, let's listen to him. And then in the womb, the child is seen by God. Yeah. And in the womb, the child is known by God. That's what the church has to say about abortion because it's not a political issue. It's a spiritual issue. And we must address this spiritual issue with the word of God. We'll say that. But that's not what we're getting now. Now what we're getting is I'm going for Kamala. Why? Because she's colored, because she's black, not because of the Bible, not because of Christ. The gospel says, if you confess your sin, yeah, yeah. an abortion is a sin. It's not a choice. It's a child. So here we see, you know exactly what it is, which tells us uh, about what this colored pastor is, that he is more colored than he is Christian. He is more black than he is biblical. And he's not the only one. We've got this other Bishop, I don't know who he is, uh, Bishop Rudolph McKissick. These men have influence because somebody black might be listening to them. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I correct myself. Somebody colored might be listening to these colored preachers. Listen to what he has to say. Telling you, it is the choice between progress and petulance. I don't need a petulant 80 year old child trying to run the country I love. Now, I can agree that there are times where Donald Trump does act petulant. I can I can get behind that. I have no problem with that. Um, but at the same time, we can also see that this woman, that she's got her issues of her own. And again, his issues are still more colored and more cultural than they are Christian. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let Pastor introduce our, our guest. And yeah, you caught that. Uh, he, she is pastor. I don't know if that's his wife or not, but she is pastor so-and-so. So we already understand that in, in terms of him being biblical, no, but being more black, yeah. Him being more Christ-like, no. Him being more colored, yeah. For those who might be saying, I don't see how you can support anybody that would be in favor of killing our children. That's a that's an argument y'all don't want to have. 
No, yes, it is. It is an argument that we do want to have. By the way, let's just go ahead to the scriptures again. What do the scriptures say about this? The Bible says that there are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue. By the way, I think all, all the candidates um, do this, but we're talking about what we should be supporting or promoting. Uh, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. What is abortion? It is killing a baby. It's shedding innocent blood. But here it is, verse 18, number 18, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to do evil. That's what an abortion is. The, the one, you've got these group of people that devised this plan, that came up with this, and that people that run rapidly to do so. If you say anything about abortion, like we see here, they would do everything they can, fight tooth and nail to make sure that you are shamed and do everything in their power to give more people access to this. Even if it means, since these folks are more colored than they are Christian, even if it means the decimation of uh, the black community where uh, the growth rate, the birth rate is at a standstill. Well, that happens when you when you abort about 20 million black babies and you are causing virtually every, not every, but virtually 40 to 50 percent of all black pregnancies in America to end in abortion. It's a good way. It's a good way to be on team Margaret Sanger. It's a good way to make sure that black babies aren't born. Because if y'all want to go to the Bible and claim that a person doesn't support the Bible, he's an adulterer. That's in the Bible. He's a bigot. That's in the Bible. Okay, a couple of things. Yeah, he's an adulterer, but so is she. So is her husband. So I think they're both are equal on that. Bible. He's a liar. That's in the Bible. That would be in favor of killing our children. That's an that's a argument y'all don't want to have. Because if y'all want to go to the Bible and claim that a person doesn't support the Bible, he's an adulterer, that's in the Bible. He's a bigot, that's in the Bible. He's a liar, that's in the Bible. We've already covered both the fact that both of them are liars and she lies about sin. Uh, they both lie, they both exaggerate and so forth. But then this issue about being a bigot, okay, uh, 10 years ago, he wasn't a bigot. When he became a Republican, now all of a sudden he's a bigot. Just go back and just look at what folks thought about him then versus now. And they never thought about that. But again, it's convenient, especially if you are a colored preacher. So all of those things, all the talking points of one party uh, are now your talking points. Why? Because, again, you are more black than you are biblical. And y'all don't support our children when they get out the womb. So don't go to the Bible to try to tell me why I ought not support somebody. And secondly, the United States ain't a church. It's a country. Nope, it's not. You're right. You're right. It's not, a, it's not a church, it's a country, but we're a church and we should make our voices known. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, Jesus says this point. He says, let your light so shine. The people will see your good works and then glorify God. How are they going to glorify God when you've got Christians that are actively promoting things, or I should say professed Christians, that are actively promoting things that go directly against the word of God? As a matter of fact, while we're there in the Bible, he also tells us this, woe, not it. You don't want anything associated with you being started off by God saying, well, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute dark for light and light for darkness. That's what we have here. This ain't about discipleship. It's about citizenship. Now, in here, that might be a different story. Well, in there, why aren't you preaching it, Mr. Colored Preacher? But in the country, every citizen gets rights. That's just my little take, because I'm so sick of folk on social media, how in the world are you supporting when uh, I can't support anybody who kills babies? Hey, oh, I almost said bad word. You, you supporting a candidate and a party that kills our children. How so? How, how, how are we supporting a candidate and a party that kills our children? Who out there is actively advocating for black kids or anyone to be killed? Tell me that. I do know one party that's actively advocating for black kids to be killed, that is black babies. Where, where, where could we see, what would we say about if 20 million black teenagers or black males or black women were killed? What, what would we say? What about 20 million black babies? I think that trumps that. As a matter of fact, take all the wars we've ever been involved in and combine all the deaths, black, white, young, old, doesn't match. It doesn't even come to the number of how many blacks have been aborted. Even throw in the transatlantic Atlantic slave trade. Still doesn't touch this number. And you have the audacity to talk about who's killing someone. Oh, by the way, those very same folks you're voting for, the cities and states that are run by them, have the highest death rate for black people. 
that wants to do away with health care, that wants to do away with mothers having the money they need for daycare so they, they could go back to work. You want to do away with all of that? Please hold your righteous indignation and your one trick pony for somebody who don't know the Bible. Couple of things. One, you don't know the Bible. Two, righteous indignation, one trick pony. Uh, excuse me. Uh, first of all, if it was that one trick pony, that's a pretty big trick for a pretty big pony, Mr. Colored Man. And if you're so concerned about people taking care of other people's responsibility, give up your entire salary, your church, lay all your offerings. I'm pretty sure you probably take in tithes as well. Take all of the money that you bring in and give that to take care of the health care, the daycare needs and so forth of just the people in the church. You're not going to do that because your mouth is far away from your heart. That's why that's why you are a worthless colored preacher. And I say worthless because not that you're a worthless human being, but as a preacher, you are because you got one job. Lead people to the cross, to Christ. How? Through his word. And you are actively going against his word. So much so that you don't care about someone just saying anything. You don't care if the party would even put together put a Supreme Court nominee who who knows she's a woman, but won't tell you the definition of a woman, but you're happy there that she's there because she's black, because she's colored, which is what you are. Uh, can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition. We're in a place where the word of God does not matter. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, speaking of whether it be abortion or homosexuality, the Bible says this. He says, and although they know the ordinances of God that are these colored preachers, these colored pastors, these black non-biblical men, uh, although they know the ordinances of God is in their Bible, we can show it to them. They don't care because they'll say it's just a one trick pony and this is not a church. This is the country. OK, fine. That those who practice such things are worthy of death. How can you not telling your congregants that doing those things uh, would, would put you in a position to be killed by God. Uh, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. That's why God is going to deal with them. That's why you have to wonder, are they even saved? Because the Bible says that they have a reprobate mind. God has passed over them and God will deal with them later. But it's not just these two. There are these other two um, colored preachers who are up leading people to the throne of death. Don't y'all, don't y'all, see, this is why y'all got to wake up and stop being so spiritual and so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. By the way, he means that. He really does mean that you guys are far too spiritual for him. You guys are too godly if you're going to come against him and talk to him about his support for abortion. This is not just about reproductive rights. This is about voting rights. I know that's not politically correct. I'm not supposed to say that. And some people will say, well, Bishop, you're a man of God. Are you? No, you're not. You're not a man of God. But just further, further clarification. Are you pro-abortion? I am pro-human and civil rights. And so women have rights too. I don't have a right to tell you that. And somebody said, well. First of all, you do have the right. As a matter of fact, you have the job and obligation to tell them what sin is. Some uh, super religious person who got a bunch of sin in their life, said, well, abstinence is the answer. Well, you didn't abstain. And what kills me is people out there protesting already had one. Uh, but we also believe that mothers have the right to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life. And they should not be criminalized for making decisions that, that will best suit them for where it is that they are. Have you ever noticed that what they never do is they never tell you how God is going to treat them, how God is going to deal with them for these actions, for these decisions? They never bring that up. You know why? Because it's just one of those things, you know what, let's not talk about it. Let's, matter of fact, let's ignore that. They are. And what's bad about it? What's bad about it? You see it last week at the conventions? Did you hear how the people cheered and the roars that went up as they began to cheer the very procedure that is responsible for our race? As I stand before you, being not a race in decline, but a race that is dying. 
we are literally dying. Our birth rates are low, and the fact that we want to kill more and more and more and more babies says a lot about us. Matter of fact, as, man, as even if we want to do another thing to kind of get rid of the, the black family, uh, let's promote as much of this alphabet community living as we possibly can. And how do we do that? Well, the only way that you can do that is to not deal with the scriptures, but ignore the scriptures and make no mistake about it. These are men who suppress what the word of God actually means and stands for. We become so fixated on antiquated language and doctrinal dis and doctrine disconnected from the teachings of Jesus that we dogmatically profess that we've forgotten that God is still speaking and that everything heard by God cannot always be cross-referenced in Scripture. I need to help somebody today. There are some Christians who say things like, if it ain't in the book, it ain't real. What are you talking about? This is what you call black buffoonery at his best. This is a colored preacher who is saying, you know what? The word of God is not as important. It's important, but not as important. It's not at the top shelf. As a matter of fact, what's just as important is how we feel, our experiences. You mean to tell me you got the audacity to think that everything God wants you to know can only be found in the Bible? Everything that he wants us to know is found in the Bible. How does a preacher say that? When you worship the Bible more than you worship God, it's called bibliolatry. Somebody may be saying, so what are you saying, pastor? We don't need the Bible? I'm not saying that you don't need the Bible. I'm saying put it in its proper perspective. You his proper perspective to him is so long as it doesn't encroach on our being black, on our color, on our culture. Again, he's going to have to answer to God for this. You sitting up here talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, quoting Ezekiel, Malachi, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You are talking, we preach every week about folk who had no Bible. <laughs> Moses had no Bible. Joshua had no Bible. Abraham had no Bible. I'm not calling him stupid. What he's saying is stupid, and he may very well himself be stupid. These are people that wrote the Bible who were hearing from God. But to the bigger point, the bigger issue is we now have the Bible, and he's saying to put it in his proper context. All they had was a word from God they heard and a feeling in their heart. And here we are telling folk to stop trusting what they feel and stop trusting what they hear. No, what they're feeling today and what they're hearing today is not from God. What they heard and felt, uh, it really wasn't what they felt, what they heard from God was the word of God. Today, they're not sending anything from the word of God. They're trusting their own, their own truth, and you're promoting that. No. No. We have become so fixated on using religion as a weapon of mass destruction and divisiveness that we've forgotten the life-giving, transcendent, transformative power of love. It cannot be life-forming, transformative power of love if you don't give them the truth. Uh, as Paul says, am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? He won't tell you the truth, which does make him your enemy, whether you like him or not, whether you agree with what he said or not, because ultimately you're going to have to give an account to God for that. And so listen to what he says you ought to do if you're not, if you don't like uh, homosexuality or you don't, and listen to what he says you ought to do if you don't like the alphabet community or you don't like um, taking the life of your baby. You got preachers up here talking about they are against abortion. Good. So don't have one then. That's your solution. Give us a biblical reason why you should have one. But don't impose your feelings on other people because your patriarchy is reckless. What's reckless about talking about who our king is, who our God is, our father, and saying what he says? How's that reckless? I don't think members of the LGBTQ plus community are of God. Good. You don't associate with them. Well, in the end, understand that God won't associate with them. And it's going to be because of people like you who give aid and comfort to sin. I'm not saying that if you committed a sin or anything like that, whether you can be forgiven because you can. The issue is uh, when you promote it, when you cause it, when you tell people it's OK and God won't be angry with that. Yes, he will. These people, this is why I say, and I'm trying to hold back on the rhetoric that I would like to use, that part of me, that my flesh, my feeling would like to bring out. But these colored um, preachers. 
these people who are so consumed with their color, they see everything through color so much so that they can't see Christ. Christ takes a backseat to their color. The Bible is not at the forefront as much as their blackness is. This is a problem. They are more concerned with their race than they are with our Savior. And that is going to cause a lot of people a lot of problems. That's the problem with us as a people. Let me just speak to us colored folk, us black. Let me just speak to us black folks for a second. We tend to lower our standards for the sake of our feeling or for uh, convenience. We're more colored if it means being more convenient instead of being more Christ-like, which might be an inconvenient deal, but it's something that's going to gain us heaven. As a matter of fact, if we start acting and behaving the way the Bible tells us to more and being more Christ-like, more biblical, we'll see the gains as a people that we were seeing even in the most oppressive time. When we're coming out of Reconstruction, out of Jim Crow, we saw people in the community having growth like never before, starting businesses, going to school, getting their degrees and things like that, having a safe community, having homes where 70 plus percent of our households were ran by a mother and a father there versus now the more we accept these colored propositions. Now we have a household that is uh, bringing out kids being born 70 something percent without a father there. That's what this leads to. And if you want to continue to have these same things and having kids on the street doing God knows what, promote the things that are for your color versus Christ. That's going to be the problem. You colored pastors, you uh, unbiblical black men, you are the reason you are part of the problem, not the solution. I can promise you, you don't have to worry about me being upset or bothered. You have to worry about what an angry God is going to do to you once he brings you into his hand. Amen. Hey